isn't an easy instrument to play, and in commercial terms, it doesn't seem to be very bankable. That hasn't deterred Bota Kellerman from making a highly successful career as a flautist, or from exploring new territory in his music. I met up with Bota to find out more about what it takes to become a Grammy Award winner. The cradle of humankind isn't focused purely on the past because it's also home to a venue dedicated to celebrating the arts of today, both visual and performing. At the age of 10, Vota Kellerman started playing the flute and is now one of the foremost world music artists. He used his classical training as a foundation on fusing classical and contemporary sounds. In 2015, he won his first Grammy for Best New Age Album and this year is nominated for his second award at the 2016 Grammys. Today, we're at Nairox Sculpture Park where I have the honor to not only get to know the man behind the flute, but to see him perform as well. Vota, that sounds amazing. I don't even want to interrupt, but I think I'm going to have to. I know you are warming up for your show, but before you get to the stage, shall we take a quick chat? Sounds good. Thanks. Let's do it. Vota formed a creative partnership with Indian composer and producer Ricky Kedge for the award-winning album Winds of Samsara. But his pathway to becoming a musician began decades earlier. Vota, it's honestly such a pleasure to meet you. You've achieved so many things in your life. Can you take us back to that moment that you fell in love with the flute? My parents took me to a symphony concert when I was 10 years old, and they asked me which instrument I'd like to play. And I, I love the idea of using my breath to express myself, like in speaking or singing. And um, I saw that all the other instruments were facing to the front, the other wind instruments, but the flute was facing to the side. So in my 10-year-old mind, I thought, that probably means it's special. You were trained in a very traditional classical style. How did the contemporary style come in? Since I was little, in my house, it was actually only classical music, but when my mom was away at work, the lady who looked after me played only African music. So I had those influences from very early. And then I did a lot of traveling and listening throughout my life. So even though I only played classical music during those stages, I was very much influenced by a lot of different music. So when I finally managed to start making my own music, those influences came out. Vota has released six albums to date, with his latest titled Love Language reaching number one in its very first week on the World Music Billboard charts. You performed your first solo performance with the Joburg Symphony Orchestra when you were 20 years old. You then went on to perform with orchestras around the world and win a number of prestigious awards. Do you remember that very first award that you won? I followed the engineering road and, and I needed the engineering money to look after my family. I started a family very early, and um, but I, every few years I'll try and cross over to being a full-time flautist and run out of money and go back. But I would enter competitions and play very seriously and travel overseas to do master classes many, many times. So when I finally started following my own road and the, the recognition came, it was very sweet. Subsequently, you've won five South African Music Awards, two ZMR Awards, a Grammy. You're up for another Grammy and another South African Music Award. How does it feel to be recognized by such prestigious organizations? Every musician really dreams of having a Grammy nomination. So my lifelong dream was to get a Grammy nomination. So when we got our nomination, I was so grateful. And then we didn't expect to win at all. And when we won in the end, it was just mind blowing. Vota had been fascinated by Indian music for many years, but it was only after making contact with Ricky Kedge that he came to experience the country and its culture firsthand. The Grammy that you won was for your collaboration with Ricky Kedge and you recorded your album in Bangalore. Is that where the inspiration came from? The album was recorded all over the world. A lot of it was recorded here in South Africa. I did go over to Bangalore and worked with, with Ricky quite a bit. We mixed the album there in his studio 
and I did some recording over there as well. On one of your visits to India, you've actually performed for the President of India. What was that experience like? That was really amazing. Ricky is busy producing a new album to bring awareness around climate change. I'm helping him co-producing the album. So we performed the main song for the President and, and it's always part of our awareness campaign around environmental awareness and, and climate change awareness. The album includes a tribute to the River Ganga with vocals by Shankar Mahadevan. Well, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing you perform and I know the South African audience that's here at this beautiful venue are looking forward to it as well. So I'm going to leave you to it and we're going to catch up after your performance. Sounds good. Let's go. This was the perfect setting for voters' style and message. It's late afternoon and the venue is looking stunning and voters are bound to take the stage. Can't wait to see him perform. Ladies and gentlemen, Voto Kellerman. It's an amazing performance. You are a dream to watch on stage. One of the songs you wrote is Ashwarya, and it's got such a beautiful message behind it, and the video is beautiful. Can you tell us about the meaning? It's about women's education in the world. We, we wrote that song with that in mind, and the video is also tells the story of a young girl. She's actually much cleverer than her brother, but her parents only think of her brother as the studying one. And she then rebels and goes and studies. And I think that's so true all over the world where many women aren't considered studying material by their parents. So we just wanted to shine the light on that issue. This is a cause that's also very close to your heart because you support quite a number of social development projects. Yes, I support the SOS Children's Villages and I have done for the last 15 years. All my CD sales go towards them. So I support a house in Ennerdale, just south of Johannesburg, all the children there. They do beautiful work. They, they create families for these children who have nowhere to go. I love kids and I think the biggest difference one can make is to, to invest in kids because those children now grow up to be more valuable parents in their own right yeah. and their kids are better off. So it's, it sort of has a knock-on effect. Yeah. Well, Vota, it has been such an honor to speak to you. I've always wanted to interview you, and now I've finally got the chance to. We wish you all the best in the future. Thanks for having me, Kriya. It's lovely to chat to you. Combining artistry and empathy, Vota Kellerman is using his magic flute to help make the world a better place.